Time for our weekly segment, one of our favorite segments where we welcome in friend of the program and ESPN elite college basketball analyst Sean Farnham is joining us over Zoom. Sean, welcome back to the program. Where are your adventures uh, housing you currently? Because I feel like you're somewhere different every night on TV, man. Now I'm in Bristol. So I'm in Bristol uh, all this week before I head to Colorado for a game between Arizona and Colorado this weekend. Uh, then I'll get home for a day and then come right back to Bristol, Connecticut uh, <laughs> before I've got another game that following Saturday. Uh, but we have to start here. I mean, I, the pearls of wisdom. I took my notepad out and I started writing as I was listening to this last se segment. Uh, Jeremy, what an unbelievable take that you had to get to 500. <laughs> you need to win games and be above 500. That's an amazing work, thing Sean. that you came up with there. That's the, the level of brilliance that you deliver on this program. I understand now why every BYU fan tunes in every single morning to make sure that they can get those pearls of wisdom. So when they go to the office, they say, hey, guys, listen, mm. if we want to be above 500, <laughs> we need to get above 500. I heard that this morning. It's I got, amazing. I got paid to say that. <laughs> yes. That works. Brilliance. Pearl, pearls of wisdom, no, no doubt. Pearl I can't price. wait to come on next week. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to come on like a half hour early and just quietly sit here on the Zoom and just listen to the show so yes. I can be better at my job. Educate yourself, Sean. Yeah. This, this is the way. Uh, let's go ahead and rewind a little bit to last Saturday with BYU and Morgan. Did you just drop a Mandalorian on me, by the way? Maybe this is the way. This is yeah, absolutely. It's either that or we, we the Bible. Mando. Yeah, we love Good. Mando. There you go. All right, go ahead. All Sorry. Right, BYU at West Virginia. Man, Foos Traore, twenty-four points, nine rebounds. Dallin Hall with twelve assists and only one turnover. BYU didn't have Ali Khalifa. They didn't have sharpshooting Noah Waterman, who's been a big part of BYU's three-point efforts. But they found a way to win convincingly in a game that they should have won. What impressed you the most about what BYU did in Morgantown? Uh, they didn't make excuses. You know, I mean, it would have been very easy. I mean, look, you go to West Virginia, you should win that game. Uh, there's been other teams. Kansas uh, did not go there and win, uh, but BYU did. And they were able to do that be even shorthanded because it, next man up mentality. The depth of this team has shown up uh, throughout the course of the non-conference, I felt. Uh, and I think that the depth is one of the strengths of this team, that it can weather somebody going down and, you know, somebody else is elevating their game and stepping in, just like when Foose went down with the hamstring and Khalifa stepped in, and the next thing you know, we're all looking around going, dude, this guy's unbelievable. His ability to pass and distribute changes the whole offense. Uh, now that offense has changed back up with Foose back into it, and I, I mentioned it during the game I had on Saturday between St. Mary's and Gonzaga that a lot of great performances on Saturday, but Foose uh, and the way that he's playing, the efficiency, the aggressiveness in which he approached the game over the weekend I thought was huge. Uh, I think anytime you have a point guard that gets to 12 assists and only one turnover, that's next level unselfishness. And it starts to create for other players like, hey, I can give it up and I'm going to get it back. If I give it back to the guard, he's not going to go ahead and just take a shot. He's going to feed me and put me in the right position. And I think that we saw that uh, throughout the course of the game. And I thought that this was a, a needed win. Anytime you went on the road, it's a great win inside the Big 12. Um, but this was certainly one that I felt they should have. Uh, and they went and executed and got it. And so good for them. Now they come back uh, and they're sitting right now uh, in, a, in a pretty good position with the strength of their schedule that's coming up. Remember, we talked about the first six games last week. And I said that was a really difficult stretch. Now, whether or not they're going to be above 500 and a top half finisher in conference play was going to be based on this six game stretch. And, and it got off to a good start on, on Saturday. Yeah, you look at it at Oklahoma. If you win that one, that's the best road win of the year. If you don't, you have Kansas State at home, who coming into last night, we were like, hey, that's super winnable. They've lost four in a row. They go and beat Kansas in overtime, which, by the way, Jerome Tang cannot be beaten in overtime, uh, apparently, which is amazing. Um, then UCF at Oklahoma State. BYU can go on a run here. And, and as I mentioned, as you pointed out, uh, BYU could actually get above 500, like, a couple of games potentially. But... But in this league, the parity is so high, nothing's guaranteed. But if, like you said, if this is if this is the moment, they got to they got to seize it to get above 500 and kind of stay there for a sec. Yeah, this is their moment, and this is the stretch because the back half of the the the, the back half of the schedule is brutal. All right, so we can talk about those games that we're looking at right now, and then also you go, okay, well then you got Baylor at home, you're at K State, you're at Kansas, you have TCU, and you're at Iowa State. Oof. Good luck. Like that stretch is brutal. So they, to be a top-half finisher, um, they have to win tonight. 
If you want to be above 500 team, uh, this is a this is a must win game, uh, I, I think. And and I, I think this is a game they can have. Oklahoma has not been playing well as of late. They've lost a couple of games at home. Uh, I think that they they were inflated early this season when they were ranked. I think at one point in time inside the top 10. Uh, this is a good team. Porter Moser's done a good job with them. Uh, but I, I think this is a game BYU can win and should win. And if they win this game, now all of a sudden you're looking at beating Kansas State at home because Kansas State, by the way, although what we watched last night was a really strong, great effort, uh, in their four-game losing streak, they were turning the ball over at a crazy amount. Yeah. And they, On the season, they've been turning it over too much. Uh, but they've allowed 19 points off of turnovers per game in that four-game losing streak. Last night's a rivalry game. And those games, guys, as we know, they're different. The emotions are different. Uh, they've had success against Kansas there. Kansas has not played well on the road at all so far in conference play. They're two and four on the road now in conference play. Uh, so that's a problem for them. Uh, but I, I think you win here at Oklahoma. You're going to beat Kansas State. You're going to beat UCF. And you're going to beat Oklahoma State. Now you're seven and four. Now you give yourself the leeway to drop one at home to Baylor, to lose at Kansas State, to lose at Kansas. You know, find a way to beat TCU at home lose at Iowa State, and then come back and beat Oklahoma State, and now you're feeling really good about where you're at. You're like 11-9. and nine, and My math is bad. I was never my strong point. <laughs> I, I think you're like at 11-9. 11-7. and, nine, 11 and seven. Um, you, you know, 11-7, and seven, something like that. Like, th I think that's realistic. I think that's, I think that's where you're probably going to look at. 11-7, and 10-8, uh, and eight, I think, becomes sure. very realistic. So you got to take care of that today. Sean Farnham is on BYU Sports Nation looking at the matchup specifically with the Sooners and a well-coached team. Porter Moser is a great personality. We enjoyed talking with him at the Big 12 Media Days. He knows what BYU is, and he said as much yesterday. But where do you feel like BYU has a clear advantage against Oklahoma tonight? Well, I, I think when you look at this game, I think a couple things come to mind for me, first and foremost. The, 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 the ability to shoot the three-point shot. When you watch college basketball, guys, as much as I do, Man, the teams that can shoot it versus the teams that can't, it is really hard when you can't shoot. Like, Indiana can't shoot. It is hard for Indiana to win games. Gonzaga right now, they are struggling on a consistent basis to knock down shots from the outside. They're struggling to win games, especially against better teams. Um, and, and when you look at Oklahoma, the, the advantage to me is behind the arc. Can they shoot the ball as well on the road as they have all season long? I think they do. Uh, I think that opens up the interior of this team. I, I think that BYU is a better rebounding team. And I think that they can they can do some damage on the glass, get second chance points, and really crash the glass and apply pressure to Oklahoma. Uh, and if they do those three things, I think they walk out of there with a win tonight. Fusa. It'll be highly emotional, by the way. It'll be highly emotional in Norman tonight, guys, because uh, of the passing of Toby Keith. A uh, longtime Oklahoma Sooner uh, booster fan, sat courtside at so many games. Uh, he, he's, he succumbed to his battle against cancer today uh, and uh, just really sad for the, the Oklahoma Sooners community and for country music fans. Uh, but it'll be an emotional night. I'm sure they will do uh, something pregame for Toby Keith. Certainly uh, that'll be a conversation with the game tonight. Uh, we talked about the parody in the Big 12 a bit, but what, what is it that you feel like this league is capable of in terms of what the tournament could be like in Kansas City as well as in the NCAA tournament and how BYU may be a more battle-tested team than they've ever been once they get into the NCAA tournament? I, I think here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, I think a lot of Big 12 teams are going to be underseeded in the NCAA tournament because of the losses that they take during conference play. And what I mean by that is you'll see more teams like in that seven, maybe even eight, nine, six range – I think you're going to see a bunch of Big 12 teams there. You'll see some teams, I think, at the top. I think you'll still see Houston up top. I think Kansas has an opportunity to still get there, uh, even though they, they've got to start proving that they can win on the road. And their lack of bench, I think, is really something to watch down the stretch. Do they get fatigued as the season goes along based on the minutes? They, they play more minutes per their starters than, uh, than all but two teams in college basketball. Mm. The Air Force Academy and Tulane. So when Johnny Furphy isn't playing as well as Johnny Furphy has shown that he can play, uh, that's a problem. When K.J. Adams doesn't step up, that's a problem. When DeJuan, like, they, Their margin for error is very thin right now at Kansas because they have no production coming off their bench. Um, so I, I think that you'll see some top-seeded teams up there on that one and two line. I think Houston still has a very legitimate chance uh, to get there. Um, but I think you're going to see some devalued teams uh, because of the losses that they take 
as you go through conference play. And subsequently, there's a lot of teams that are going to be in this NCAA tournament field that a lot of teams aren't going to want to see. And they're going to play them, and they're going to feel them and the defense and the pressure and how the Big 12 teams play. And I think you're going to see a lot of teams take some losses, and, and you see the Big 12 shine once again uh, in the NCAA tournament as it has uh, for, for quite some time now. Wild that we're halfway through the season and every Big 12 team has at least three losses. That, that's just crazy, which means we're pacing for the champ to be 12 and 6. And with the yep. projected champion in mind and looking at the top part of the conference, Sean, who are your top five Big 12 teams as currently constituted? Well, I, I think you'd go with Houston. Uh, I think you'd go with Baylor, Iowa State, Kansas, and TCU. I think those are my top five teams right now in the conference. And the reason I throw TCU in there is TCU is like the only team that can win on the road. Like they've got great depth. They've got a little bit healthier as of late. Um, and, and I know they just took a loss, but, you know, Jamie Dixon just lost his father two days ago. And Coach Dixon, I was texting with him earlier today. You know, he's on his way back after being in Los Angeles uh, as his father was passing away. So my thoughts and prayers go to Coach Dixon. But that TCU team, they can really turn you over and they can really score points off of turnovers. They score more points in the fast break than any, any team in the country. And I think when they get to the NCAA tournament, they're going to be very dangerous because as, as we've seen, nobody wins on the road in the Big 12 except for TCU right now. <laughs> and so I buy TCU and I, and I give them extra credit based on that more so than their overall record. Sean Farnham with us on BYU Sports Nation ahead of BYU in Oklahoma. Great to speak with you, my friend. We wish you the best of luck in Bristol on your many travels. And just maybe BYU beats Oklahoma tonight. The Cougs start flirting with your top five. I got to write down, you, if you want to be over 500, <laughs> you have to win games to be above 500. Yeah. That's I, how I, that works. I felt okay. something on that one. Gross. I got it right there. Good. Are you in a Marriott and grabbing the Book of Mormon? What's going on, man? <laughs> No, this is my little uh, this is my little like notebook book that I have. It has a little piece of paper on it, and so during the course of the day, I'll like write little notes in it. Oh yeah, and then I'll type them up on my computer. So when I sit on the set tonight, hopefully I don't sound like a blabbering idiot and say <laughs> something silly like, "If you want to be above 500, you have to win games to be above 500." It's always wonderful to have you on the show. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you kept me on the Raptor for the Cougar Tale, maybe I'd be a little bit nicer. No, just you weren't kidding. kicked off. You're still always. on it. It's still on hey, it. Uh, I haven't seen it. People got, can't find me. That's all they, I know. They got People a Big 12 special rapper, by the way. Oh, there's, Sean's there's, not there's on it? Alternate rapper, and we're not on it either. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, all that's the, what's going on. Now I'm ticked it's, off. It's, 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 it's very upsetting. All I can tell you guys is this. I'm very thankful to be on here once again with you guys. I'm really excited for the game tonight. I will be in studio. I'm sure we'll be talking about it at halftime of the Houston broadcast uh, that we have on ESPN2 tonight. Uh, the Big 12 is, is a great conference. You guys have positioned yourself very well here down the stretch. And I, I can't wait for Kansas City. Who Let's knows? Go. Let's go. Who knows? Maybe I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> outstanding. Oh, I like that tease. Sean, great to talk to you, man. We'll do it again soon. Look forward to it.